Hello friends, welcome back to The Morning Mindset. This is our opportunity today to get our minds aligned with the truth of God. And I hope that you are doing something like The Morning Mindset every day of your life, even on weekends, because we need this sort of help every single day. Speaking of the weekend, Friday is on the way. It's a few days away. And on Fridays, we do our Pray Together episode, where we actually spend an entire episode sometimes 30, 40 minutes, praying for the needs that have been submitted to us. It's an opportunity for me to pray for you, but it's also an opportunity for the body of Christ who listens to the morning mindset to come together in prayer and to pray and have our collective faith strengthen and empower and and move the hand of God as he ordains it to be. I would encourage you, if you have a request you would like to have submitted for this coming Friday's Pray Together episode, please do so at carrygreen.com slash prayer. That's C-A-R-E-Y, green like the color dot com slash prayer. And if you would pray with me on Friday, remember, you can pause those episodes. You can come back to them. You can finish the episode later, but pray with me as I pray for those needs. God is moving. He is doing a great work through your prayers. All right, today we're going to talk about how to speak. Now, you know, children learn this early in life. They learn how to say mama, dada, no. (laughs) There's all kinds of things children learn. And it's kind of a natural thing to learn how to speak. But we're not really talking about the mechanics here. We're talking about the right kind of speech. Proverbs has a lot to say about this. This chapter alone, I found four verses that refer to speech in some way. Some are good examples. Some are not so good examples. Let's look at them. We're going to look at Proverbs 17, beginning in verse 7. Verse 7 says, Fine speech is not becoming to a fool. Still less is false speech to a prince. Okay, so he's giving us a contrasting uh, set of circumstances here. A fool who's trying to speak in flattering, flowery terms it's not fitting. It says it's not becoming to a fool. It doesn't make the fool look look good in people's eyes. It actually makes the fool look worse because it's obvious his life does not jive with what he's saying, you see. And he says still less becoming is a prince who is false in his speech. So a, a person in a place of authority and rulership and should, who should be an example, who is a liar, Boy, it makes me think about politicians. How many times do we hear politicians making promises they never intend to keep? How many times does it become evident after the fact how much people have been lied to by a leader? Friends, this happens in the church as well. It's my prayer. We can be people of integrity as Christ followers, whether leaders or not. Verse 10 says, A rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. Now, this may not initially sound like it's talking about how we speak, but think about that. A rebuke is an act of speech. It's someone saying to another person, hey, this thing that you did, that wasn't good. That wasn't aligned with God's ways. And it says that a rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows to a fool. In other words, you can beat a fool for his foolishness, trying to beat sins into him, so to speak, and it will have no effect. But if a man of understanding receives a rebuke, it goes deep into his heart and it, and it affects him in a good way. So friends, let's not be afraid of rebuke. I think our church today is a little bit anemic because we've been afraid of rebuke. We've been afraid of bringing God's truth to bear on the lives of others that we care about. And it should not be so. Verse 27 says, whoever restrains his words has knowledge, and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. So this is about not flying off the handle, not speaking before you think, not uh, just blurting out an answer when you really haven't thought things through. That's the kind of speech he's talking to us about avoiding. And then verse 28 says, even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he's deemed intelligent. Friends, we should be slow to speak, slow to become angry. We should be listeners, trying to understand circumstances and situations and the people involved as followers of Christ. 
Lord Jesus, continually teach us how to speak, the right way to speak in any given setting. These are four different settings we've talked about, but there are myriads more. We ask you, Lord, to give us your wisdom, your discernment, and your insight into how our words can be a blessing and to give us self-control to restrain our words when they will not benefit the situation. Lord, fill us full of sweet speech that will progress the flow of your kingdom forward into history. In Jesus' name.